Hi, welcome back with our movie explanation. Today, I'm going to explain a comic science fiction action film called Iron Sky. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. An American manned expedition arrives on the moon in 2018. The spacecraft includes two astronauts, one of which is an African-American male model named James Washington, who was particularly picked to assist the United States president in a re-election campaign. We see at the beginning of the film that the spacecraft lands with a poster that says, yes, she can. Another man whose name is Houston was walking there and was trying to get a signal. And then the signal starts getting stronger at a point. He was trying to contact Washington and tells him that there was something unusual about the signals. After that, Houston was awed at the sight. He sees that there is a helium-3 mine on the dark side of the moon. He tells Washington that there is a huge helium-3 mine and asks him if he could see that. Just right after this, a Nazi man comes out of the mine and shot the person. Washington was trying to come to Houston when two other Nazis fired at their spaceship and blew it up. Four of such guarded military came and then took Washington to their camp. Since the original colonists left Earth in 1945, a cadre of Nazi scientists led by General Wolfgang Korsfleisch has occupied a large military outpost on the dark side of the moon. They are biding their time and building the technology to launch the Götterdämmerung the mother of all warships, it'll be the key to regaining their original planet. The Nazis built a huge space citadel with a massive armada of flying saucers over the course of 70 years in complete secrecy. We see the Earth specialist Renat Richter tells to a room of children that she is going to start the most unpatriotic language, which is English, and they need to know the language to get help by others, and by others they probably meant the people of Earth. And then she asks questions like, where are we from? and the children prompted in unison, Earth. Then, when did we leave? The children said in unison, 1945. And then she asked, where did we go? To which the children said again in unison, the dark side of the moon. This time, Richter smiled and said brilliant. Next, we see the character of Klaus Adler coming into the scene, with the bike taking Washington as a captive, and then throwing him off the bike. And then a car came and halted there, and Wolfgang Kurzfleisch got down from the car with his other men and asked Adler that who is that person pointing at Washington. Adler turned him as the spy from Earth and told Wolfgang that he has caught him. After they opened the helmet of the captive, everyone there was shocked at the sight because the man was African American. Wolfgang in disgust tells Adler whether that was a joke. Just in the next scene, we can see the current president of USA is working out and planning a campaign with their campaign manager, Vivian Wagner so that she could get re-elected as a president and then drinking. The president is pissed over the fact that going to the moon and campaigning there was a bad option and bashes the manager for that. Eventually, that idea actually made by the president herself, she said to the manager, it was my great idea, have they succeeded? Now it's your stupid idea, got it? She is stressed over the fact that her polls are going down the drain and the election is not very far, just knocking at the door. She then tells Vivian that she needs a miracle Another man who was in the defense said that the plan was actually great because America hasn't been to the moon in 50 years and there was a chance to get re-elected because one of the men was black. The president didn't understand why it was such a great idea to be re-elected. Renate Richter educates Aryan children. Her admiration for Hitler stems from a highly edited copy of Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator, which she regards as one of the world's greatest short films. Being a captive and held at gunpoint, Washington tries to make the Nazi around him understand that he was not a spy from the Earth. He was just a model sent in by the moon by the president of the USA as a propaganda to get her re-elected. He tries to make them understand that he was just part of a stupid campaign. The Nazis didn't listen to him and kicked him again. This time, Washington became serious and hit the other guards with his helmet and tried to run away. But his escape failed when he fell into a machine. Then, we see Adler and Richter walking in the hallway and Richter is, is asking Adler about the captive and how does he look and what he is wearing. Just after this point, Washington falls down from the ceiling, breaking a grill and landing directly on Adler. Washington stood up and asked Richter, how do I get out of here? Richter looks away from him and Washington misunderstood that as a place to get out. As soon as he headed towards that position, Richter tried to stop him because that was an airlock. As soon as he rotated that lever, a big gate opened and a huge gush of wind started to pull Washington and Richter out of the camp. Washington held the door handle and when Richter was also getting pulled out, 
Washington holds her hand and tries to throw her back inside. As soon as they got inside, Adler arrived at the place with some men and tried to shoot Washington. Because Adler was getting derailed from the plan of testing the captive, Richard tried to stop him from the shooting. Washington tells Adler that he will be in great trouble if he shoots, because Washington knows many important people, and especially the President of the USA. Adler then takes him to a place for testing, and he asks Washington what was his mission to come to the moon. Washington again tells him that he's just a model, and he just works to get the paycheck. The scientists beside him hold the phone, and then ask Washington what this thing is. Washington tells him that it is just a phone, but the scientists claim that it's something very smart, and tells him it is some kind of computer. We see Colin Powell in the UN, telling other ambassadors about the re-election campaign, and tells him as soon as they land on the moon, all communications and signals are lost. The other ambassadors suspect whether they are hiding something about the dark side of the moon teasingly. We see Vivian, the campaign manager, is tense about the future campaigns, and then bashes the employees in the head of the department. She has a meeting with the president, and she is still unanswerable. In the next scene, we see Adler telling Richter that both their genetics match 97%, and Adler thinks that this is romantic, and that's a great matter to have a baby together, and then make him or her the next Fuhrer. But when Richter asked her about her scientific research, Adler didn't pay much attention to that, and tells her one day Renat. He then takes Richter and tells her that all the moon will be theirs after they conquer Earth and put the present Fuhrer, Wolfgang, out of the way, and that will be their final victory. Dr. Richter investigates Washington and gets his smartphone, which he subsequently identifies as having greater processing capacity than the Fort Reich's 1940s style computer, allowing it to be used as a control unit to build their massive space battleship. When Richard tried to prove off his wonder weapon to the current Fuhrer, the phone battery runs out rapidly. Klaus Adler, a Nazi officer picked for genetic reasons to mate with Earth expert Rene Richter, Dr. Richter's daughter, sets out on a flying saucer to acquire more such computers on Earth. He brings Washington with him, who has been aryanized by Dr. Richter, using his albinizing medication. Richter haven't seen a black man ever in her life and asks Washington such stupid questions like, what's wrong with your skin? Washington then comes to know that the old scientist is Richard's father, and Adler is her husband. Because the doctor albinized Washington, they made a test where Washington was impelled, rather programmed to act like the Aryans. When they arrive in New York City, they realize Renat has stowed away with them. They leave Washington after he introduces them to Vivian Wagner, the president campaign advisor. The Nazis are presented to the president, and they launch a successful campaign of Nazi-style propaganda to re-elect the president. Having so much fun on Earth that they forget their objective, Adler and Renate use Nazi-style language to fuel the president's re-election campaign. Renate is ignorant of Adler's desire to succeed Kurzfleisch and dominate the globe. When Adler and Richter got into the president's office, the president was in shock with the uniform both of them were wearing and found that interesting. Vivian tells the president that the man, who was Adler, is going to be the campaign troop. Adler then presents them the plan and Richter gives them the speech. The moon Nazi Führer faults Adler to New York to find out why the computers are taking so long to be retrieved. He is murdered by Adler and Vivian. Adler announced himself as a new Führer before resuming his flight aboard Quartzfleisch flying saucer, abandoning Vivian but stealing her iPad. Renate, who had been misled by Nazi propaganda into believing that the Nazis intended a benign invasion on Earth, is ultimately convinced that Adler's goal are evil and joins Washington in fighting to halt the attack. Renate is persuaded by the homeless Washington that Adler plans to commit genocide on a worldwide scale. Shortly after, the moon Nazis launch a massive attack on Earth with a fleet of enormous Zeppelin-like aircraft known as Siegfrieds, which tow asteroids as missiles and fire numerous flying saucers towards New York metropolis, destroying the Statue of Liberty and blitzing the city. With considerable success, the United States Air Force engaged the flying saucers. The United Nations gather to address the threat posed by the moon Nazis. The president names Vivian as captain of the covertly militarized spaceship USS George W. Bush, which carries nuclear and directed energy weaponry, only to learn that, that most other nations, save Finland, have secretly armed their spacecraft as well. They send them against the Nazis' navy, annihilating the Siegfrieds. Adler arrives in Kurzfleisch's flying saucer with the tablet computer, 
with he uses to start the Gotra de Marung. Renat and Washington go to Atlas Flying Saucer to the Gotra de Marung, where Washington disables the engines while Renate searches for Adler. In the meantime, the worldwide space fleet destroyed a Nazi moon base and approaches the Gotra de Marung, which dwarfs them all. Adler, commanding the Gotra de Marung, destroys portions of the moon in order to expose Earth to his line of fire. During their fight, Washington disconnects Vivian's tablet from the Gotra de Marung control panel and Renate kills Adler before he can fire at the Earth. Renate and Washington flee separately as the Gotra de Marung collides with the moon. The President of the United States congratulates Vivian from the UN session, at which point Vivian reveals the presence of an enormous tank of helium-3 on the moon, over which the President promptly claims exclusive ownership on the grounds that its possessions assures a millennium-long source of energy. This infuriates the other UN members, who start a brawl as the multinational fleet turn on each other. Renate reunites with Washington in the destroyed moon base, where he has regained his natural pigmentation. They kiss in front of a befuddled gathering of Nazi survivors, whom Renate states will have a lot of work cut out for them. The closing scenes of the film depict the Earth, ostensibly amid a worldwide nuclear war. The planet Mars is revealed with an artificial satellite in orbit at the end of the credits. Iron Sky is a comic science fiction action film directed by Timo Vorenzuela and written by Johanna Sinsalo and Michael Cancinico that was released in 2012. It depicts the narrative of a gang of Nazi Germans who escaped to the moon after being defeated in 1945, where they created a space fleet to return in 2018 and conquer Earth. Iron Sky is one of Finland's most costly films. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, don't forget to let me know how you feel about today's video in the comments down below. Stay safe and never forget, you are awesome.